Hello and welcome. Welcome to Let's Talk Sports with Rick Manorino. Yes, it's me solo this week after having, you know, great uh, analysts and prognosticators and different people in over the last several weeks to talk about NFL and what's going on. This, this week is a, you know, down week in the NFL. We got the big Super Bowl analysis show coming up next week so look forward to that we're, we're going to do the nfl super bowl show and as you know cincinnati and the rams uh, i think we all pretty much a lot of us figured the rams were going to be involved i know people green bay green bay all year kansas city kansas city kansas city well we know they're not in for different reasons we'll talk about that next week uh, i'm just simply going to say that uh First of all, welcome, welcome in again. Thank you. We had a lot of viewers on last week's show, and uh, I really thank you for that. I, you know, the analysis and, and having those prognosticators in is a lot, a lot of fun, and, and to kick it around and have fun with it. NFL's been tough, but uh, I, I want to thank all you viewers. It's always fun. This week I'm going to do a general sports show. I haven't done a sports show in, in a few weeks. I used to do them, as you know, with my, with my uh, counterpart, Jack, and uh, he, he's pretty much no longer with the show uh, of late he's been very very busy he may he may re-enter at some point but uh, he's got a lot of other things going on and job opportunities that he's involved in so uh, we thank Jack for the great work that he has done but uh, he's involved in other things now and, and, and we wish him well uh, hopefully he will uh, get back into the show at some point but uh, we'll see how it goes next week we're definitely going to do an NFL show uh, briefly again it's going to be uh, Cincinnati versus the Rams the Rams are four and a half point favorite they're playing at home SoFi Stadium, two years in a row, two years in a row, the home team ends up in the Super Bowl. Tampa Bay, now the Rams. So uh, is the outcome going to be the same? I don't know. We'll talk about it, but Cincinnati looks like that team this year. No, I, don't, I was thinking about this today. I never in my, in my wildest dreams thought that Cincinnati was going to be in the Super Bowl, but we'll talk more about that next week. Uh, one other NFL issue I wanted to briefly, briefly touch on before we go on to some of these other sports that are happening and things I want to catch you up on and uh, give you my input on some of the other things that we got going on. A lot of sports happening right now, but I want to talk a little bit about the Brian Flores situation. I know a lot of you know what's happening. Got fired. He got fired in Miami, uh, interviewed for some jobs, felt that it was they were not fair play, that um, jobs, jobs were already handed out, particularly in New York, and uh, they interviewed him after they had given a job to somebody else. There's a lot of conjecture. There's a lot of conversation. He's getting a lot of support out there. I saw him on CNN last night. I saw him on Sports Center. I saw him on CNBC. I've seen Brian Flores everywhere. And to be quite honest with you, I'm kind of tired of it. I'm not tired of his cause because if you look at it, there, there, there's, a, there's an imbalance there in the NFL. There's no doubt about it. And I can't explain why. Uh, we'll talk again about it, a little bit about it next week. All I can say is this, the, the, the compelling thought that comes to my head, what are there, 32 teams, 30 teams in the NBA, something like that. There are 15 black coaches, 15 black coaches, and a multitude of general managers black in the NBA. Now, it's, it's pretty well balanced, and they talk about they are very, very aware of equality and giving everybody the right, no matter what your color is, to have a job in the NBA. Um, they are the guys that have, have had women as assistant coaches, guys like Popovich bringing in um, a young lady to, to, to be a coach there. And, of course, she's gone on to uh, greater things now. She's going to be coaching the uh, Aces, the Las Vegas Aces. Uh, what is her name? Becky Hammond. Becky Hammond comes to mind. Um, she was Popovich's first female assistant, and a lot of teams do it now. I see a lot of female assistants on the sideline. Good for them. I, I, I kudos to the NBA. I, I think they they got it right, and uh, really kudos to the NBA. I I, I think they got it right. Uh, NFL. It, my point here is, you have one black coach in the NFL out of 32 teams, one black coach. Now, they had nine vacancies this year. Nine vacancies in the NFL head coaches. Pretty much five of them are, have already been filled. I guess the offensive coordinator for the Rams uh, is going to be getting one of those jobs. So. There's four jobs left, four more jobs left in the NFL available. Now, if blacks get two of those jobs, then we're going to have three in the NFL. It's still an imbalance. Uh, is the lawsuit the way to go? Uh, is more education the way to go? I think, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the NFL is an animal unto itself. Um, it's, it's a lot of moving parts on an NFL team and what's happening and why you hire people. And, you know, it's so much different than basketball. But kudos to basketball, NFL. 
you know, you're going to have to deal with this lawsuit and a lot of conversation and who's right, who's wrong. A lot of owners are upset because they feel they are more, more than giving to all sides, all races, um, females, males, blacks, whites, purples, greens. Um, the NFL feels uh, they are not at fault here. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it evolves. And um, I just wanted to throw that out. So NFL, we'll talk a lot next week. We'll recap the season. We'll get into how, who we have uh, for the Super Bowl. And again, I want to thank you all. I had a good, really good audience last week, and uh, the numbers were up. And thank you for that. I hope I hope we do the same this week. And uh, continue to like us, please. Uh, I know I'm not as a pretty of a face as all the other guys I got on here, but I'm here. You got to put up with me. It's my show, and. You know, I pretty much direct who's going to be here and who's not going to be here. And if they don't want to be here, fantastic. But, uh, you know, Rick Manorino is always going to be here uh, putting it out there and hopefully giving you great information. You can count on me to be here. I love the show. I love the studio, WWDB TV, all our other social outlets. I love it. Uh, I live for this. And it's fun to be, have the reins and to be able to do shows the way I want to do them week to week. This week, we're going to do a little more sports. Let's drop over to the NBA. NBA is getting close to all-star break. We're 50 games in, so we really have an idea of, of what's happening in the NBA. And the NBA is exciting this year because you've really got some improved teams. I, I just have been so impressed with the Memphis Grizzlies and, of course, John Morant and that kid Bain over there and, of course, Jared Jackson. Memphis, Memphis is the real deal, and they continue to go out and beat teams. And the leadership there is fun. The kids are young. They talk a lot. They get in a lot of... Uh, what should we say, uh, scraps on the court uh, with other teams who, who don't like the way they act on the court. I've heard that a lot, that people don't like the way these kids from Memphis act on the court. And, um, you know, I heard one of them say, Jared Jackson, we're, we're going to continue to talk smack, and who likes it, likes it, who doesn't, doesn't, but we're, we, we're going to be who we are, and we're going to continue to win. We'll see how they do as the year goes on. They got the third best record, I believe, in the NBA. Uh, of course, Minnesota playing great basketball. I mean, that has been a bottom feeder team. Uh, led by Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, kudos to Towns. He, he, he had a really r rough time through COVID. He lost his mother and a lot of family members, and that kid continues to play great basketball. Of course, he was great at Kentucky. Carl Anthony Towns, thumbs up to you, man. I mean, you fought through some real personal problems, and you're having a great year. That's a nice team. Cleveland's playing good basketball. They've improved a lot. Uh, you, you look at uh, Chicago uh, with Zach Levine and – and, DeMar and DeRozan, um, man, those guys are playing great ball. Very, very much improved team. And, of course, uh, Phoenix has continued on with the way they played last year. Phoenix has the best record in the NBA. Um, for the most part, they're avoiding injuries and, and, and not a lot of COVID, but they've – what are they, 32-9? and nine? Uh, No, 42-9. and nine. I'm sorry, 42-9. and nine. Uh, what a record. Phoenix continues to play great basketball. Golden State continues to be on their heels. Golden State, I think, is has lost 13 games, so they're playing well. Again, Memphis is playing well. Uh, Utah, Denver, good teams, had a lot of injuries. On, on the eastern side, Miami's in, Miami's in the lead. Um, through it all, the Heat have had a lot of injuries. Jimmy Butler's been out of the lineup. Uh, Hero's been out. Um, they, they, they've had a lot of injuries in Miami and, and guys in and out of the lineup with, with COVID. Um, but they're number one. Number one in the East, Chicago's number two. Uh, Philadelphia's in there, but, you know, they continue to be consist inconsistent. M Milwaukee's been inconsistent. They're playing about 500 ball, the champs from last year. A lot of these top-tier teams that have had injuries and COVID issues, it seems like COVID has passed through the NBA and they're back to normal. Uh, the All-Star break, everybody's going to get a little break here. I think that's uh, February 14th, 15th, 13th, something like that. Um, I believe that it's the uh, weekend 12th through the 14th. But, uh, you know, NBA's heating up. we got 30 games to play, a little less than 30. Uh, we're going to figure out. We're jockeying for position. Teams like the Lakers, a uh, lot of injuries, a lot, a lot of injuries over there. They're below two games below 500. The Clippers are at about 500. Two playoff teams from last year. The Clippers, of course, have been without Paul and Leonard for a great part of the season. Um, I don't know if the Clippers and Lakers are going to get it together. What do you all think? Uh, is is uh, Leonard going to be back this year for the Clippers? I mean, he got hurt in the playoffs. Um, still not back. Is uh, Chris is is uh, Chris Paul going to continue at 36 to be so good and 
is so good in Phoenix and, and stay injury free and keep leading that team. Uh, Booker over there is great. Uh, Jay Crowder, that's a real nice team. Uh, Cam Johnson's a great player. Um, Payne, Cam Payne is a great. They just got an Aiton, and uh, I've seen a resur resurgence. I, I've never seen JaVel McGee play so good. He's got three rings, three, three championship rings, JaVel McGee, uh, two in Golden State and one with the Lakers. And he didn't play a lot on those teams. Uh, he was pretty much a sub and was an average player. I seen that guy come to life in Phoenix. Uh, JaVel, I see you, baby. You're playing great ball. You look fantastic. I, I mean, I'm always rooting for you. You're a good, good person. Uh, Southern California area. Of course, your mom was one of the best WNBA players of all time, one of the best college players of all time. So um, kudos to your mom and to you. You're playing great ball, and uh, Phoenix, is, Phoenix is doing it. We're all wondering, we're all wondering, is uh, New Jersey going to come to the forefront and play basketball? Uh, you know, one week they got Kyrie in the lineup now, and then at home he can't play. Uh, the next week you got four or five games on the road he plays. Then you go home and he doesn't play. Um, he's not allowed to play without a vaccination in New York. That's the rule. He can't play against the Knicks, and he can't play in his own home team game. So, you know, what are we doing? That's a, that's a team in disarray. Durant's out for another, what, four or five weeks with that knee injury. Harden is, uh, you know, talking about trade. He said he's going to uh, challenge the free agent market. Uh, good luck to you, James Harden. You're a fine ball player. I, 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 you'll probably end up with the Lakers, you know, like Westbrook and – I don't know. The NBA, for me, there's, uh, again, five or six really good teams and a couple of teams that are just just, just, just are getting close to being good and getting healthy, like, the, you know, the, U the Utahs and the Denvers and uh, the Milwaukees. Uh, I, I think they're all going to play really good, really good basketball down the stretch. But it's been fun watching some of these younger teams come to life and step up in the NBA. And then, of course, we always have our teams that aren't very good the uh, Sacramentos and the, the Indianas and the Orlandos, uh, for some reason, uh, they're just not good teams. And, and Portland, you know, that's no fault of their own. Lillard's been out all year. They've had guys in and out of the lineup. Portland's struggling, and uh, they're not having a good year. They lost, they lost to the Lakers last night when they should have won that game. They were ahead most of the game. The Knicks, man, they're counting too much on Julius Randle to be the man like he was last year. It's really not coming to pass. Uh, he's really not doing it. And um, the Knicks aren't playing good ball, but as you know, I have an NBA show. I love to talk NBA. That, I am more adept at doing that than any other sport. Um, as you can see, I, I'm really in tune to the NBA. I watch a couple games every night. I love it. Uh, the thing I like more about the NBA than the NFL is in the NBA, two hours and 15 minutes, two hours and 20 minutes, the game's over. Uh, and, and I can watch a couple in a four-hour period. In the NFL, man, those games just drag and drag and drag. They're exciting, but... Uh, I'm kind of glad NFL's about over, to be honest with you. It's time for a break. I'm always so excited during the season. But by the end of it, the NFL, it really, to me, drags on in my mind uh, because I like the fast pace of the NBA. But that's fun. Speaking of basketball, the NCAA men's, we got about one more month here before March Madness starts, college basketball. And um, Auburn looking very impressive. I've been watching them lately. Auburn looks good. Uh, Auburn is a good basketball team. They We've had a lot of number ones this year. Baylor's been number one, UCLA, Auburn, Purdue. Uh, a lot of teams have been number one. Um, Gonzaga, of course. They've all been in the number one spot and haven't uh, held on to it. Auburn's got a lot of tough basketball to play yet. You know, they've got to play an improving Kentucky team. Um, you know, that's a team every year that gets better and better and better, and they, they, they seem to play every year with one year and out players, a whole bunch of them, four or five of them leave every year from Kentucky. But, uh, you know, they, 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 they are on the rise. I see them improving every week. Duke is improving every week. They got a couple of really good kids at Duke. Um, Purdue has a good team this year. UCLA, if I had to pick a team to win it this year, to win the NCAA men's tournament, I definitely will pick UCLA. I think UCLA has a lot, a lot of talent. Very, very well coached. Great coach over there. Um, I, I have a lot of faith in what uh, UCLA is going to do. USC was winning early. Uh, the Trojans of USC, they, I, I see them lose a lot of games lately. Uh, I think they got four losses. They went 21 and four or something, 19 and four. But SC is not that team. They're not going to be as good as they were last year. Of course, you know, Mobley uh, went on to play in Cleveland now, and he's having a great year. Uh, they missed that kid. His brother's there. His brother's there playing. 
Uh, his brother is is just not the big big dog. The older brother is playing in Cle for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So if you get a chance to watch the Cavaliers, they have some good, young, exciting players. They're very inconsistent, you know, but they're, they, they have a record above 500. But that's an improved team. And, you know, even, even Love is playing a little bit. You know, he's been, wow, how many years? Is, you haven't heard that name, but uh, Kevin Love. Uh, he's been playing a little bit, scoring 10, 12 a game and helping that team and helping the youth. But check out Cleveland. They're, they're, they're a fun team. Uh, you know, teams like Washington have been a disappointment. Of course, they loaded up with all those ex-Laker players, uh, Kuzma and, 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 and those type of guys, uh, KPC and uh, Harrell. They picked up three pretty good players from the Lakers. And, you know, the Lakers got Westbrook. I don't think either team has made out on that deal, to be honest with you. Westbrook has been okay. Uh, he's been up and down. He's been okay. Um, really doesn't know his role with the Lakers. And when LeBron's around, his role really gets mixed up. With LeBron out right now, it seems a little better for Westbrook. But uh, when he, LeBron's in there, he's confused of what he's supposed to do or not to do. Um, Washington, man, they brought in those Laker players, and they're really no better. Beal's out a lot. So, anyways, it's all fun. We got a lot of basketball, NCAA tournament, and we also have the women coming up. It, it appears that South Carolina is the best team. UConn women this year are down a little bit. They're in the number 10 spot. But, you know, Geno gets those kids going, gets those women going, and UConn always comes up at the end, but, uh, you know, South Carolina continues to lead to play a lot of good teams. There's a lot of very good uh, NCAA women's team out there, and uh, we'll see what happens, but South Carolina looks awful strong. WNBA, they're talking about getting ready to start again. That'll be starting in a couple of months, and WNBA is always fun. I hope the Aces do a lot better with uh, Becky Hammond over here. Um, I believe that's her name. She was an assistant with Popovich. Uh, and she took over this job. I think she's going to do a really good job with a very, very talented Las Vegas Aces team. And we'll see what happens. Uh, Washington's going to have Della Don back this year, who is just the beast, the MVP a couple times. And Seattle's going to be strong again. So we'll see what happens there. But I wanted to uh, move on now to the Australian Open. That was a lot of fun. But, you know, some of the stars weren't there. You you didn't have Serena there. Um, you didn't you didn't have Jokovic there. And, it, it was a little bit different, but the two the two players that were supposed to win won. Um, Ash Barty won on the female side, continued to keep her number one ranking, and uh, Nadal did very very well. Beat Med Medvedev. That final that final match was Med Medvedev. <laughs> easy for you to say, was uh, up two sets and uh, he ended up losing that. Um, Nadal came back like a beast. Nadal's in great shape, man. I, I, I mean, he is in better shape than any tennis player. I think that guy is just goes and goes and goes and that 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 final match that he won to be the Australian Open champion was over five hours I mean you got to be in shape man and uh, he played great uh, congratulations to Nadal and to Barty the winners uh, look always looking forward to the big tournaments in in, in uh, tennis I really enjoy playing those particularly uh, watching those I'd never be able to play them uh U.S. Open is always fun for me. I, I really, really enjoy that at Arthur Ashe Stadium. And, and, and to tell you the truth, one of my goals is to uh, get out there one of these years and, and spend two weeks just watching tennis and going into that region there in Flushing Meadows and enjoying that U.S. Open. That is really one of my goals, to get out there and just get some great seats and hang out and have the great food in New York and just watch tennis. And uh, gosh, i got to get that done sooner than later. But... Um, congratulations, congratulations to the winners of the Australian Open. Hockey, hockey, hockey. I know you're all saying he doesn't talk hockey enough. And you are absolutely right. Uh, hockey's a great game. I don't watch it a lot. I gotta, you know, my guy Dennis, who's on my football show, knows a lot about hockey. And I'm going to have to have Dennis in and talk some real hockey. But uh, I've been looking at the better teams there, and I noticed that the Panthers – have the best team in hockey this year. They they look into the, they look to dominate and, and teams like the Lightning and who else did I put down here? Uh, the Maple Leafs are playing well. Um, of course, the Golden Knights of Vegas, who are so well supported in Vegas, playing well. But they, I, as I look at it, they play in a weak division with, with the Ducks and Kings and Coyotes. Um, I just don't think that's a strong division, and I think they're in first place with like 26 wins. And when you look at uh, the Panthers and the Lightning, they they have over 30 wins. Um, you know, the Rangers are playing well, the Hurricanes are playing well, and of course the Colorado Avalanche look really good this year. 
Uh, they've been winning a lot of games. Hockey All-Star break in Las Vegas this weekend. It's crazy. They got a uh, hockey All-Star game in Vegas this weekend. And they have the NFL Pro Bowl in Vegas this weekend. It, it's, it's really amazing, the sporting events that come to Las Vegas. And it, to me, it's, it, it's amazing because you got an NHL hockey All-Star game and it's in Vegas. But at the same time, you got the Pro Bowl in Vegas. It's like, I don't know, the Pro Bowl used to be in Hawaii and they moved it last year and I think it was in Florida or something. And now, now it's probably going to become regularly in Vegas. So we got some sports this weekend here. Uh, really no big UFC events, but we got a hockey all-star game and a football all-star game. And um, that ought to be fun. And, and, and we're all looking, to the, looking forward to the NFL draft in Vegas this year. You're going to see things you never saw in the NFL draft. Vegas does it bigger than anybody else. You know that. The number one visitor's destination. That, uh, that draft, that NFL draft is going to be a lot of fun this year. I know they got a lot of ideas coming up with a lot of fanfare, excitement. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be in town. It was supposed to be here last year, but it got switched because of COVID. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun. If you make it out here to Vegas uh, to that draft, uh, I think it's going to be a, a top, top-notch event. And you know Vegas always does it right uh, so look forward to that. Uh, as you know, we got a new football coach over here in Vegas. Um, Josh McDaniels, forever, forever with uh, New England and Bill Belichick as his offensive coordinator. Uh, he also brought along the general manager. That was kind of a uh, two-way deal. They needed to have both to happen for them, either one of them to take the job. So now we got, uh, you know, New England West over here with McDaniels and, and the general manager. Good luck to the Raiders. I hope that things even out for you and you get away from all the drama that happens with around that team and we can just start playing football and maybe have a good upcoming year a couple other things i wanted to talk about um we've talked about nba australian open men's ncaa the olympics are coming up we've got the olympics in, coming up uh on the fourth tomorrow winter olympics a lot of controversy there several people in the world uh, you know feel that china is not the place there's a lot of political problems there. There's a lot of people in uh, slave camps there. There's a lot of people that are that speak up against the government that are, that are put in concentration camps. Again, I, I'm not real adept at that. All I know is I, the news reports I watch that uh, a great segment of the world talk about the Olympics be a, to being about unity and all the countries coming together to be unified in, in games and enjoy the games and enjoy time together and, and getting to know other athletes. And, and, and I'm sure that will happen during the games amongst the athletes, and I'm sure there will be some great competition. Uh, I'm just not sure that it's the proper location for this type of supposedly loving, uh, loving event and, and competitive event and bringing nations together event. As China is the place to have it, but again, I'm not. Uh, I'm not the guy that makes a decision on that. I can just um, give you an opinion on what I think, but. Um, they're here. I'll watch what I watch. I, some of the events I like, to me, it's not the Summer Olympics. Uh, winter will be fun. I think we get way too much uh, snowboarding events. But uh, snowboarding is fun, and, uh, you know, skateboarding is fun. But for some reason, these events, to me, they, nowadays, Summer or Winter Olympics, we do a lot, a lot of sk skateboarding and snowboarding. I like the downhill skiing myself, and, of course, the figure skating is, wow, what talent. But enjoy the Olympics. Uh, not any football this weekend. We're, 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 we're not going to be playing football this weekend. But uh, we're definitely going to have the Olympics. We're going to have a Pro Bowl game you can watch if you want to watch that. You know, that's, that's up to you. Uh, enjoy whatever you do this weekend. You have probably a little more time to spend with the family and not worry about, wow, playoff football. Every game went right down to the wire, man. I mean, playoff football was out of control this year. And... Uh, what amazing games, and, and, and there were some games that, surprising, you know, Cincinnati, how they continue to win, and how they won in Kansas City, that was crazy to me, but no real football this weekend, no real hockey, enjoy the basketball, enjoy the Olympics, we got baseball coming up soon, there's some more controversy there, uh, we can't uh, get the Players Association and the owners together on a new contract, they're saying now, the spring training is going to be delayed. A sport that's already hurting in its fan base and fan base going down every year, Major League Baseball, still, still an incredible game. 
Baseball, Major League Baseball is an incredible game with incredible talent. Um, it's, it's, it's such a great sport. It's so much talent. Um, unbelievable hitters, uh, great pitching, great fielding. Baseball is really a great game, and, and, and I'm just a bit concerned, a bit concerned that it's going to be delayed this year. They're already talking about delaying spring training. Uh, pitchers and catchers are supposed to report on February 14th. Um, that's just around the corner. They don't have a contract. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's still a lockout. Uh, we appear like we're not close to an agreement. The, the two sides are really far, far apart. I don't know how, how closely you all watch this, but I know that the owners and players and what the players want and what the owners want to give, and it's uh, advertising rights and how much players uh, have come into them and uh, autograph rights and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's very detailed of what's going on. And this next contract is going to be tough to hammer out. Um, I wouldn't be too encouraged for the start of baseball. And that being said, I hope I'm wrong and they come to an agreement today. And I'd love to say, yeah, we're going to have baseball. And, but I, I don't see baseball starting by, you know, April 5th. That's not that far away. And I, I know the season's slated to get started. And baseball's a long season, but it's a lot of fun, man. Uh, you know, the dog days of summer. Baseball is a great game, but I, I just I, I just don't see it happening. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, another subject, and again, I wanted to talk about a lot of different sports subjects today because we haven't done it in a while, and to catch you up, uh, college football, the uh, recruiting. It was interesting to see the uh, signings uh, over the last couple of days yesterday. Uh, Texas A&M far, far dominated in getting the better kids, the, the high school kids that are going to be the difference maker. And as you know, freshmen in college nowadays aren't freshmen in college like they used to be. Freshmen in college are, are stars. You see it over and over and over in college football. Uh, and we're getting more back to normal in college football, not as much, you know, COVID involved. And it's just getting getting back to normal and playing football again after really a couple years of COVID and canceled games and teams playing at half strength. College football is a great game, as you all know. It is truly, truly, truly a great game. And uh, again, congratulations to Georgia. They had a great, great season. I think that they're going to be good again this year uh, coming up. I, I think you're going to see a, a team like Clemson come back to the forefront. Clemson got pushed to the background this year because of a couple early losses and a lot of uh, young players. I don't know how closely you watch college football. But Clemson, as the year went on, got better and better and better and dominated in their bowl game. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Clemson has. But Texas A&M, dominant, dominant in the recruiting wars. Uh, I think Alabama was, no, you know, number two, Ohio State number three right in there. Um, the thing that amazed me with Lincoln Riley leaving Oklahoma and going to USC, they, he made the comment they got 13 transfers. 13 kids who transferred out of other college programs to USC this year, and they didn't have a great, great recruiting class. And he made the comment, it's very unusual to get that many transfers and not have as many high school kids come in. And he'd rather have high school kids come in that he can really train than transfers. And, and I was just wondering, what message was he sending there with that comment? Uh, I watched that last night, and I said, hmm, is he setting us up for failure at USC next year, saying that I prefer, and, and that sounds weird to me because if you're a transfer, you say, hmm, maybe he really didn't want me here. But that all being said, who was the uh, one of the best freshmen in the country last year? Caleb Williams, Oklahoma quarterback, who ended up taking over, taking over, um, in a year when Spencer Radler was predicted before the season started, he was in the Heisman race. Spencer Rattler got beat out by Williams, the freshman, left the program. I don't know where he is now. But he was a Heisman Trophy hopeful, and he got beat out by Williams. Where did Williams transfer to? One guess. Are you guessing? One guess. Where did, where did he transfer to? USC. But it's Coach Lincoln Riley from Oklahoma. So that happening, here comes the snowfall. Here comes the tornado. What happened? Those two quarterbacks that were 
highly touted at USC last year, both left the program. Both kids who had started, had had premier years, they both left. So, I mean, the scenery in college football bothers me a little bit with this transfer portal. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, I think kids ought to play or not play where they, where they start. I can understand if things happen and you don't get to play. Like a perfect example, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow at Michigan, floundering on the bench, getting no love, nobody really noticing him. Had been a great high school football player, transfers out to LSU. Sits around one year, and the next year he becomes a starter, and you all know the story. National champion, Heisman Trophy winner, and superstar NFL quarterback in his second year going to, going to the Super Bowl. So in, in a case like Burrow, it's, it's pretty compelling, um, and it does happen. But just all this movement, I, I've seen so much transfer, so much movement in college football, and I can't help but raise my antennas when I hear Lincoln Riley say, oh, I'd rather have bring in freshmen, I'd rather bring in high school kids than have all those transfers. I don't know. I want to see what's going to happen. Is SC, is SC going to have problems this year? And he's setting us up? I don't know. But a lot of change in college football. A lot, a lot, a lot of premier coaches went to other programs. As you know, Kelly left Notre Dame. And a lot of things happened out there. Uh, Mario Cristobal leaving Oregon and going over to Miami. So college football is going to be exciting. And I can't wait till it happens. Spring football practice will be starting soon. And NFL combines and things like that will be starting soon. I guess NFL combine, what, is in February and then the draft. But uh, a lot of sports ahead. Uh, NBA is big. College, college basketball is big right now. College baseball will be starting soon. That's always fun. People don't watch it much other than the World Series. Uh, women's softball college is always fun. You know, I just wanted to really hit a lot of stuff that we, that, that we haven't talked about and, 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 and put it out there because I'm a, I'm a lucky guy. I enjoy sports. Um, I watch a lot of sports. I'm, I, I'm pretty well versed in what's going on in most sports. So, um, again, I need to brush up on my hockey. I need to bring my big man, Dennis, and Dennis Van in here to talk a little hockey and, and, and lay it down for us, and we'll do that before the playoffs. But I hope I've hit a lot of areas that you're interested in, um, particularly, you know, I'm real interested in NBA right now. We'll, we'll see how that's going to go. And um, college basketball, March Madness is coming. We all play March Madness. We all got our pools. We all love March Madness. That's one of the biggest events coming soon, coming soon. We're already at, what, February 3rd. Um, this show will air on February 4th. So please watch us, continue to watch us, love our show, like our show, send it to your friends, share it. Uh, again, I'm going to always put an opinion out there. It may not be the best in your mind, but it's the best I got, and I think I'm pretty good at it. Next week, we're going to do NFL Super Bowl show. We'll have the big dogs in here to uh, kick it around and tell us who's going to win. That'll be fun, and then we'll get into our uh, NBA, NBA exclusive show, which is about 30 minutes you know, per, per week, and then uh, we'll see what we do with Let's Talk let's talk Sports. But I wanted to dedicate this one to Let's Talk Sports for all of you to uh, get caught up with me and what I got going on. And this is fun. I love it. I love it. I'm always going to be here. I can tell you that uh, no matter what guests I have, as you all know that, uh, you know, I, I, I've had guys like Pete Rose in here and Marlon Greenwood, all great, great, great professional players. And I've had a lot of good stuff in here. And um, some great prognosticators, some great analysts, and it's always fun to do a show by myself. I know you get bored looking at me, so I'm going to end this show, and I hope I've been helpful to you in, in what else is going on and catching you up. Enjoy the Olympics. Enjoy, continue to enjoy NBA and college basketball. Have a great, great weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the show. Thanks for sharing it with your friends. Let's have a record week again this week. Uh, last week was really a good week, viewer week. Bring your friends along. Let's have a great week of viewership, and uh, please comment. Thanks, like us, and continue to share us with your friends. Everybody here at WWDB-TV, we thank you, particularly Mr. John Stiles, who's always, uh, you know, extraordinary at his job in producing this show and with this great set we have here. What a beautiful set, isn't it beautiful? Uh, it really emulates what sports is about. Comment on this stuff. I hope you like our set. I hope you like what we're doing here. God bless. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your family. Stay safe. Stay away from the COVID virus. Be happy. God bless, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you for watching.